Hey, hey, welcome back to the Let's Play. So yeah, that intro there is pretty much what I've been doing periodically since the last episode. Basically, any time I popped on this world, I decided, you know what, let's go villager zombie hunting. So yeah, as a result, we are starting to populate the Emerald Bank now. There's still a bunch of slots to go. We've got four of these tool smiths and five of these weapon smiths. Each of the weaponsmiths has a coal trade and also a semi-decent iron sword trade. I've cherry-picked these trades, so in case I ever wind up to the point where I lose everything, I can get myself situated again with some semi-decent gear. For example, I buy four of these, we've got looting three. I could also buy four of these, and we have ourselves quite a heck of a lot of enchantments, for example. As a result of all of the trading, I do have a bunch of emerald blocks here to start replacing the green color concrete. As time goes on, eventually, we'll wind up with a fully emeralded bank, if that makes sense. <laughs> we got a traveling merchant. Do you or do you not have a Nautilus shell trade for once? Oh, he does! Yes! Oh, that's big. Okay! Okay, that is actually going to tip us over the edge in terms of our requirements for a conduit. Uh-huh. That is absolutely fantastic. So here we are, a little bit of trading, lots and lots of iron being sold so we can get ourselves enough emeralds to buy ourselves a bunch of shells. So there we are, my friends, five Nautilus shells. That's the amount we could trade before the trade itself was taken out of the game. So yeah, pretty cool, my friends, pretty cool. If I was to get out my ocean stuffs thing here, yeah. My goodness, I can't believe I'm about to do this. We're about to make a conduit. It has probably been years since I've made one of those bad boys. Yeah, Mr. Trader, for once, I'm not going to kill you. No, 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 you had good trades for once, buddy. I'll give you that. Don't worry, my friends, we won't be spending the whole episode doing villager stuffs. No, 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 we're going to be doing some other stuffs today, some nice, fun things. Oh, yeah. One of the things I'd like to do is to claim one of these here trade alarmers for one of the YouTube member rewards here. So let's go for this guy right here here. Here we are. Right, so we grab the lead and we go have ourselves a good time. Hell yeah, dude. So then here we are. Caroline's reward is a llama called Alicia. So there you have it. <laughs> Sharing a little pen here with Secretariat. Amazing. Love it. There you go. Hope you enjoy. So, checking out our project board here, my friendos. We've got the Bank of the Pythonator. That's actually done. So, that can be wiped off of there. Uh, create portals to various resource gathering areas. Create a frog light farm, guardian farm, 1000 diamond or mining challenge. There's a few here that could be made in Project Waterway. 16 color automatic sheep shearing wool farm could be one of them. And what I like to call a green machine, bamboo, cactus, and vine farms. Ooh. You know what? I'm kind of down to do this today. So if all of that sounds like your cup of tea, I would, of course, very much appreciate it if you'd head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like to support the series. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And if you really want to go one further with your support, you can use code PYTHON when ordering any of my Apex Gaming PCs for 5% off. What the heck, man? Surge protector? But I've not got any of the bleeding copper thingies. Protect a villager from an undesired shock without starting a fire. Ooh. I had no idea that I even had the ability to get that. I thought that particular advancement would require the usage of a lightning rod, but uh, no. So there you go. That's advancement time for today. Inadvertently done. <laughs> I love it when we get accidental advancements. Hey, I wonder if we can get another skeleton horse, four horsemen of the apocalypse thingy to spawn in again. That'd be hilarious. Because at that point, we would wind up being inundated with skeleton horses in this world. We'd go from having absolutely none of them at all 
to having multitudes of them. They'll be taking over the world at this rate. So here we are, my friends, down at Project Waterways, the underground Hobbit River village of epicness, which I still don't think there's a proper name for. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've asked for suggestions many times. I've just forgotten to pick one. But yeah, here we are. We need to figure out a place for our green machine. And I am thinking uh, just sort of over here or over here. There's plenty of spaces we can go to. We need a large amount of space, though, because there's going to be three farms in it. There's going to be a vine farm, a bamboo farm, and an automatic cactus farm as well. It's a good thing we've got three farms going in here as well, because, yeah, we go in, and then on the left, there'll be a farm. In front of us, there'll be a farm. On the right, there'll be a farm. And then behind us, of course, is the exit. So, yeah, it all works out rather marvelously. Let's see if we can't dig ourselves out a bit of a room, the central room, if you will, and we'll see about getting this thing out the way. Alrighty, guys, so here we are with a nice central room. Things are looking good. Yes, it's circular, and yes, I know that circles are illegal in Minecraft, but you know, you do your best, don't you? So, yeah, we've got the three areas off to the sides. We accidentally wound up bumping into an old beacon location, so I'm probably going to wind up filling that in in not too long from now, but yeah, turns out this left room here has a much more limited space than I first thought, but I think I can still make something work in here. I'm thinking a vine farm. And the idea is that we just have like a output chest, say here, for example. I want there to simply just be output chests on each of the uh, edges here. So we could easily pop into them and grab whatever it is we need. So yeah, output chest here. We would have maybe a wall here and then a whole bunch of vines growing downwards. And then yeah, we'll have a nice supply of vines going on for whatever it is we might need to use vines for. Mossy, cobblestone, uh, decoration, all that kind of stuff, you know? And then yeah, towards the back here, we could have maybe the cactus farm, then to the right here, maybe the bamboo farm. And one thing I did realize is that in one point 20 we're getting bamboo blocks and bamboo planks and bamboo slabs instead so actually we might need a slightly larger bamboo farm than i initially thought i'm thinking maybe we do it towards the back here we should have plenty of space going on back there and we shouldn't wind up bumping into the space where this vine farm is gonna go right all righty my friends i think i've got this thing just about figured out we're gonna have a six by two layout with the cacti meaning we've got 12 growth cells which is pretty good i mean this is only a single player rod at the end of the day so yeah once again output chest right here all of the cacti will automatically break off when they hit i think a sign and then they'll fall into some water beneath it and the water will simply go into a hopper which will then go into the output chest so yeah that's two out of three spaces figured out this one over here with the vine farm we're gonna need to make it taller and we're gonna have to do it in sort of a diagonal way so we can have all of the vines sort of of growing in front of each other so we would have one string of vines going down there one string of vines going down in front of that another one down here another one down there you know etc etc Alrighty, i mean there's no reason why we can't go ahead and make a bit of a start on this thing we've got ourselves the output chest placed down we've got a hopper here all we need to do is try to make it so that the water flows directly down into that hopper in fact look at that we've actually managed it uh to the point where actually maybe i could go one block further back back it should go perfectly in there now yep there we have it okay so all we need to do is replicate that on the right side the thing is though i don't want this to just be a hidden away crummy looking stone farm no 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 no. that's not how we roll in this world is it we go ahead and we make the effort to try and make things look Good, all right. All righty. So we've got ourselves the growth cells added. What we now do is we add in a bunch of signs. And the reason you do it diagonally adjacent to the cacti is because when the cactus grows up and it hits these signs, for whatever reason, it automatically pops off. And then, of course, what will happen is it will go into the water down below and into the chest. So, yeah, nice and easy, my friendos. Okay, so with that all done and dusted, the time has come to actually finally put the cacti in. We're looking pretty good. The functional part of this 
is done. But in terms of the aesthetic part, oh, no, 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 no. We got some more things to do, my friends. We tried to get rid of these walls and replace them with something that looks a bit nicer. So then, we're sticking with the bright colors and sand theme with this room. And we're going to use leaves alongside it. So we've got a bit of yellow and a bit of green in here. Just to go along with this, really, we've got yellow, we've got green. So... Yeah! Ah, oh, cool! Look at that, my friends! Our first bit of cactus! <laughs> So at least we know this thing works functionally. Just got to make it work aesthetically as well. We're making slow but steady progress, my friends. We'll get there. To add a bit of texture variation in with the leaves here, we're using a combination of jungle and oak in the hopes that it looks rather nice. I certainly hope so anyway. When building in Minecraft literally requires you to sacrifice your life. Yeah, don't mind me just slowly getting pricked to death. <laughs> All right, guys, we're pretty much there. Just got that one, just got that one. So there we have it, my friends. The entire interior of the cactus farm is now done. Feeling pretty good about it, I must say. Yeah, I like it when things look good, even though we're probably never going to look in here again after today's episode. Um... <laughs> <laughs> just how it is, my friends. But yeah, there we are. I just like the fact that we spent the time to make it look good. It just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I mean, look at it. We've got eight cacti already. Yeah, the production is well underway, my friends. So then, this next farm, the vine farm, should also be pretty simple and easy to get up and running. We have, once again, one hopper there. If we place down a water source here... Does it go all the way? Yes, it does. So there we are. Already got ourselves some vines, which is great. Uh, so we would go ahead and place them, I think, on the roof. But yeah, what will happen is the vines will grow downwards. They will start uh, dangling down, which, of course, is very, very good. But already, yeah, we can't reach that, can we? Not that far back anyway. So we're going to have to go ahead and dig these up right quick. And we're going to bring the walls in a little bit. Now, I know. I know this is probably going to make the farm feel a bit more claustrophobic, but I'm doing this for the sake of being able to get loads and loads of vines. Or maybe we can go one block further back. If we did that... Yeah, look at that. We can reach the vines at the back there. Okay, very good. So, we're going for a slightly more basic decorative style inside of the vine farm room here, my friends. We basically got dirt and leaves, and that's about it, really. Uh, I might go ahead and add in another of these pearlescent frog lights up here uh, with some more leaves, because why not? Here we have it. And then, uh, yeah, guys, I guess now is as good a time as any to actually begin on placing down these vines. They yeah, proof of concept. Boom. Got that one. Boom. Got that one. It's got into the water and it should now be in the chest. Yeah. One thing I did have to do though is I had to replace the walls in here with dirt instead of mud because uh, yeah, the mud would have shown through the other side of the vine farm. Otherwise, there yeah, we have it. I mean, it still looks pretty all right with dirt, right? Yeah, I'd say that's still all right. When you realize that actually you don't need to restrict the vines to just here, you can literally put them everywhere. I really don't care if this entire room becomes overcome with vines. The more vines we have, the better things are going to be. It's as simple as that. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some shears in here so we can go ahead and harvest these things if and when we can. So that just leaves the fully automatic bamboo farm. This one is more a case of just getting into a bit of a rhythm, really. We'll go with a similar kind of window design as we've done with these two here, of course. But obviously, the first thing we need to do is we need to dig out the area. So, the good thing about bamboo farms, my friends, is the fact that they do not require water of any kind. So, we don't have to worry about none of that nonsense. So, all we need to do, of course, is dig ourselves out a large room. I'm thinking of having this be a long corridor more so than a wide room. Uh, mostly because I think we would wind up pumping into the back of this room right here. So, yeah, in this case, we would essentially have a minecart rail that is just continuing continuously running around a loop because yeah we'll have ourselves one line of bamboo here and then another line of bamboo growing here maybe it shouldn't just be two long strips maybe it should be four long strips i see no reason 
why we can't do that. Yes, we will eventually bump into there, but I believe we can still get another column of bamboo to the right here. I'm absolutely convinced of it, in fact. This would be the piston row, then it'll be redstone, then it'll be piston, then this would be another bamboo row. Alrighty, so there we are, my friends. Minecart rail has been sorted out. All we need to do is finish digging this room and start populating it with the pistons and the bamboo and all the other stuff that we need. Ah, oh, perfect. See, this is why I keep minecart components in a redstone box box as well. Look at this! I can make a minecart hopper straight off the rip. <laughs> nice one. So, that will go back and forth underneath the bamboo, collecting it as we go along here. And it will continue doing that forever more, basically. So, each row is nine blocks long, and we've got four of them, so that means we need 36 pistons. And I'm going to say maybe eight observers? When the bamboo hits the observer, the observer will send out the pulse, which will actually activate 18 pistons at the same time. Holy guacamole! <laughs> Perks of working around this area, my friends! Yeah, this thing seems to be working an absolute treat. We're getting so much iron from this, dude! Oh, love it. Right, I need cobblestone, I need wood, and I can make the pistons necessary to get this thing underway. So then, let's put the pistons in first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in an observer facing out that way, and an observer facing out towards the wall there as well. Of course, replicating that on the other side as well. We'll add in another observer for each little setup with the little face facing out the top. We'll put a bit of redstone on top of that and of course this one over here as well. And the idea is when the bamboo grows up to this point and the observer detects when the bamboo has grown, it'll send out a redstone pulse out of the little redstone butt there. It'll power this redstone which will then power this observer which will then power all all of these cables that I'm putting down here. But yeah, again, replicating that over this side, we go ahead and place it against the top corner there. So the little face is facing upwards. And then once again, with the redstone, adding it in rather like so. So let's go ahead and give this thing a bit of a test, shall we? So it grows up. Boosh. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Nice. And then, yep, the minecart hopper is picking it all up. All right, final bits of bamboo being placed in. There we have it. I do believe this thing is now fully done. So, once again, giving it a bit of a test go. Yeah. And then the minecart hopper, of course, will pick it all up and everything will be fine. Okay, so now we can get out of here. We can place in the glass because, well, we shouldn't ever have to go in there ever again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> all is looking well. Here we are, my friends. This is our green machine farming room. And we are about to decorate this thing and make it look good. And just like that, about an hour later, we got this thing done. I really like this. <laughs> I think this is one of my better block palettes I've used in a fair amount of time, my friends. I mean, just look at it. We've got the mangrove stripped logs as a bit of an edge. We have ourselves the greenery in the form of the jungle and oak leaves. We've got these here yellow frog lights adding quite a nice amount of light to the area. We've got some flower pots with the produce from this very area. Oh, this is just brilliant. Look at this. Look at the amount of stuff we're managing to get. This is just fantastic. All right, so what about if we were to do a little bit of a vine farm in now? Yeah. Lots to chop up, my friends. Absolutely glorious to think that at the beginning of today's episode, none of this was here. And now we have ourselves not one, not two, but three farms. And a whopping great looking central room as well. Yeah, we've done a lot today, my friends, and I'm pretty proud of myself for it. So all that needs to be done between episodes, of course, is the front facade. As I hopefully mentioned before, this is going to be just an open entrance. We're not going to be having a doorway, but we still need to make this thing look good, don't we? And then, of course, we can also, you know, spam these pathways all the way along. At the end of the day, that is the whole point of this place. We can walk along the river's edge. Eventually, we'll decorate the river itself, of course, to make it look even nicer. But yeah, slowly but surely, Project Waterways is most certainly getting there. Before wrapping up for today's episode, I want to say a massive welcome to It's BR Boys. Thank you so much for becoming a member on the channel. I truly appreciate it. And we've also got a super 
chat to shout out as well. Alicia Lewis with a second donation. Donating $20. Thank you so much. That is an incredibly generous donation and I truly appreciate that support. It goes a hell of a long way. As for the comment of the day for today, we have Nez Radub who says you should definitely build a stable for the skeleton horses. Even cooler would be if you made it out of bone blocks. Oh, that's a great idea. It makes sense, doesn't it? Skeleton horses, bones from a skeleton. Yeah. Also, I think iron bars would work better than chains as lampposts in the Emerald Bank. I wanted to go ahead and give that one a bit of a go just to wrap up here because it does sound logical, doesn't it? So, we're popping into the Emerald Bank here. We'll see how this looks. So, there we are. Ridding that, placing that down. We've got the lantern, of course. Boosh. Okay. The only thing is, it connects up with that, doesn't it? Ah, oh, that's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was the reason I went for chains. I mean, at the end of the day, even in real life, you can get lampposts that have, like, chains as the stalk, can't you? Stalk, post, whatever the terminology is, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think we'll stick with the chains for now. But, yeah, the iron bars, like I say, it definitely makes sense, doesn't it? Maybe we'll have to change this around just a little bit. I mean, I really don't like the fact, for example, that the glass panes connect up to the iron bars as well. Maybe the iron bars here just need to be changed out entirely, you know? Maybe we swap the whole thing around. Maybe we have the chains here, and then we have the iron bars here. But for now, though, my friends, it is time to wrap up the episode. It has been a long one for me, my friends. So I really do hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you have and you haven't already, I would, of course, very much appreciate it if you'd head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. The support goes a hell of a long way, and it's the best way of letting me know if you want to continue seeing more and that you're enjoying the series in general. Of course, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to do that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content let me know what you think of today's green machine epic build in the comments area down below if you've got any suggestions feedback anything like that it's always welcome down there but yeah for now thanks for watching have a fantastic rest of your day my friends thank you for all your support and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye bye